So I advocate for us to rid our kitchens of nonstick cookware. Many people argue, hey, there's certain things that I have to have a nonstick pan for, like a French omelet. To do a real French omelet, the right French omelet, a Jacques Pepin French omelet, you have to use a nonstick pan. What do you think we try it with a carbon steel pan and see what the results are? Hey, I'm Jed, this is Cook Culture. So I totally get it. Using a nonstick pan makes things easy. Absolutely. I never argue that point. I do argue the point that every single type of nonstick pan that is sold, every single brand, no matter how much you spend, $20, $250, whatever you spend, they all wear out and they all have questionable chemicals. So there are some pretty massive issues around using nonstick cookware but it is wonderfully convenient. And that's why it has been omnipresent for decades and decades and decades. But as people choose to move away from nonstick and move towards carbon steel, stainless steel, a cast iron, enamel cast iron, there are certain types of dishes that want to be made that that nonstick works really, really, really well for. And one of those things is a French omelet. And a French omelet takes a certain type of technique and using the pan at just the right temperature for it to come out of the pan just perfectly. And so what we're going to try to do today is make the exact same dish that Jacques Pepin has made, the exact same French omelet in a carbon steel pan and see if we can get the exact same results. So I've invited a good friend of mine, Chef Mara, into the kitchen because she is the one that taught me how to make omelets. And we're going to see how well we can do. So let's get this done. Okay, so the French omelet. It is something that people talk about continuously to me of being the one thing that people need the nonstick pan for. So this is my friend, Chef Mara. Hi, Mara. <laughs> hey, hey, Jed. Uh, so Chef Mara has an extensive amount of experience cooking French food, Italian food, all different types of cuisine. She has traveled and lived all around the world. She's been teaching with us a cook, cook culture since the beginning, and she's now teaching with us again, which I'm really excited about. Mm -hmm. um, so Chef Mara and I were talking about this dilemma. Right? Do you have to have a nonstick pan to make a French omelet? And her automatic reaction without hesitation or any sense of emotion or, or joke was like, absolutely not. Mm -hmm. right? She didn't even know really what I was asking her because she wasn't up on this controversy of do you have to have a nonstick pan to make a French omelet? And so she was like, absolutely, I can make a French omelet without. Well, I'm old enough to have been taught by French chefs in carbon steel. There we go. So she said to me, when I said, oh, but Jacques Pepin uses a carbon steel, or sorry, uses a nonstick pan, she said he had to have learned on a carbon steel. Yeah. Right? Because they wouldn't have had it when he was a young apprentice. Right. Yeah. So there you go. So, you know, somebody find out, is that true? Did Jacques Pepin only ever make French omelets <laughs> on a nonstick pan, or did he learn on Not carbon possible. steel? Not <laughs> possible. So I said, great. Hey, Mara, can we get together? Because Mara taught me the elements of making, and, and excellent omelet, right? So my omelet game was okay. Mara spent some time with me probably 10 years ago now showing me how to make a, a true French omelet that's a little bit different than a North American style omelet we get that she will probably mm -hmm. talk to today. And I said, great, so can we get together and do a French omelet? And using a carbon steel pan, that is. We're gonna be using a dedicated egg pan today. Um, that's probably gonna give us the best results, I would assume, um, but it doesn't mean that you have to be using that. So. Um, let's get into this. So Chef Mara is going to be showing us the one, two, threes of how to be using the pan, preparing the pan, the right type of heat, uh, how she prepares it with the type of fat, and all her little tips and tricks she has for making the ultimate French omelet. And she is striving for perfection here. So what we're gonna- Yeah, I might have to make a few. It's so like what, that first crepe that you throw out, right? Exactly, right? Yeah. So what she's gonna try to do here is make a couple and we're gonna see, you know, how do we get to that perfect Jacques Pepin uh, French omelet, yeah. right? Yeah. So let's get into it. Great. Okay, so I'm gonna start first by sauteing some scallions. The most classic French omelet, and they're quite different from a North American omelet, which is kind of like a big thing folded in half. Um, French omelets, it's kind of about minimalism. It's not about a lot of fillings. So one of the most common ones, and the one that Jacques Pepin uses for his demo, is omelette au fin herbe. And so that's chervil and chives and parsley. And, but, you know, I think that it's kind of hard to find those herbs in the winter. 
So I think it's better to just do a little bit of a scallion and we'll put it in the omelet afterwards. You can put some cheese, you can put whatever, but this is more about the pans and, and the technique to make an omelet. So. So I've got two pans, so I'll just saute them in one pan and make the omelet in this one. And if I just had one pan, I would saute my fillings and then take them out if they need pre-cooking and then put them in the omelet at the end. Okay, so two egg omelet, three egg omelet, four egg omelet. I'm going to go for three eggs. If I'm making an omelet for myself at home, I usually just do two. But um, for the sake of the pan and the size of the pan, I think I'll use three in this case. So some nice organic eggs. Bit of an egg shortage this week in Victoria after Christmas. Everybody baking and eating at home. And another little trick that I like, some people put cream or milk in their omelet, but I just like to put a little drop of water and really just, you know, like a half a teaspoon. And I think it was James Barber that I got that tip from. And it kind of just makes it a little bit airier and lighter. A bit of salt right in the omelet. I'm warming the pan at the same time. And I'm just going to do this with a fork. So when you really want to mix your eggs well, if you can see any bits of white, you haven't mixed them enough, so it's good to really give them a good mix. What I've done with this pan, it's a well-seasoned carbon steel pan that I've been looking after at home for a while and practicing on. And I put a little bit of oil in it and I'm heating it up. And usually one of the big mistakes that people make is cooking eggs on high. You never cook an egg on high. But with an omelet, a French omelet, you go fast and it's a little bit higher than, say, the medium low that we would normally fry an egg with. So now that this is a good trick, you can make it just with butter. But what I like to do is preheat a little bit of oil and do a mixture of oil and butter. So with the oil, you get the higher cooking temperature. With the butter, you get the flavor. And a French omelet shouldn't have any color. So let's see if I can do that. We'll, we'll see if I can do an omelet with no color. Once you put the butter in, you can you really get a feel for how hot it is. I'm gonna turn that down just a bit. And you know, at home I have an electric stove. You don't have to have a gas stove. Of course, it's really nice. And this is a great stove. Okay, eggs in. And don't be afraid to lift the pan off of the heat. You're stirring as if you're making scrambled eggs, but very quickly, cleaning the sides. And then one of the little things I do is just kind of let the runny bits run around. But what we want here is a very soft omelet, a little bit wet. And the French call that bavouze. And to bave is the verb to slobber. <laughs> So it's kind of like an omelet that's like slobbering out the sides. Not a very nice word, but okay, I'm just gonna turn that off now and just let those eggs cook a little bit with the residual heat. And it's nice and bavuz. I hope I didn't get any color on it. I might've got a little bit. And now we're gonna see how it comes out. We can put some of our green onions in there. You can put pepper in if you want at this point. Put it back on the heat a little bit. So it's, there's a real play back and forth with the heat. And after this I'm going to show you a little hack on how I get the top cooked a bit more because North Americans do like an omelet that's not as wet as a French person. Not so bavouze. Okay, so you'll see this if you watch the Jacques Pepin video. You take your hand like this and you just take your fork and just kind of guide it down like that. And then you just flop it 
onto the plate. So you can see it didn't stick at all. And it, this is a great pan to make omelets with by all means. There's a little bit here, but that doesn't matter. And if there is anything stuck on the sides, just a little bit of chain mail, we'll get that right off. So what you'll often see if you actually see a chef make an omelet like this is they might just fix it a little bit on the plate, roll it kind of perfectly. Not bad for a first attempt. <laughs> um, the color's good. There's hardly any color. It is bavos. It's kind of slobbering out of the side. Nice and thin. Um, torpedo shape is really nice. You want it rolled. It's not, it's not one that's folded in half if it's a French omelet. And then with this pan, which I've just been using, all I'm going to do now before I make another one and see how good I can get here, lots of omelets for breakfast today, is just wipe that out with a paper towel and then go through it again, add a little bit of oil, add the butter. Okay, so back on low here. Try again. I'm going to try for that nice torpedo shape. I think I'm actually going to do two eggs. I've, uh, I use two eggs at home and so I think I'll try two eggs on the next one to get it cooked in the middle a little bit more. Okay, two eggs, a little bit of salt, just a drop of water. A little bit of oil in my pan that I'm preheating. That's not much. That's like, I, it's almost less than a teaspoon. So it's not about putting a lot of fat in it. bit of butter. Watching that butter melt is going to tell me when my pan is hot enough to put the eggs in. You don't want the butter to brown at all but you can see it's melting and bubbling a little bit so when it's fully melted got it right around the pan and now I'm ready for my eggs. So once again, just mixing it up. Now I'm going to let it set. You can see how easily it's coming away from the sides with just a fork. I'm gonna, the other thing about carbon steel is it really holds heat. Cast iron and carbon steel really, really hold the heat. So I'm gonna turn it off for a minute. I'm gonna add a little bit of my onion. Spread it out in the middle. I mean, I can almost shake this whole omelet. It's that loose in the pan. Okay, you can just let a little bit of the runny part run off the edge and cook on the sides. Okay, now changing the position of my hand again, I'm just going to, and actually sometimes I think Jacques Pepin knocks his to get it down to the edge of the pan. That can help a bit too. Okay, so now we're going to just roll it. And 
then we'll just fix it up a little bit. There we go. Mine are always a little more elongated than torpedo shaped, but that's a nice omelet. No color on it. Okay, so now I'm going to do an omelet the way I would cook it at home if I'm not trying to prove a point or um, and if I want to save pans. So I'm not going to cook the filling separately. I'm going to put the onions right in here. I'm going to make the omelet in here. I'm going to put cheese on it because I would do that at home too. And then I'm going to show you a little hack that really helps, uh, really helps to finish an omelet a little bit more and not have it too runny. So two eggs. I have chickens in my backyard in Victoria, so I eat a lot of eggs. Okay, in the meantime, I'm going to put some of these onions in here to cook. And then I'm going to throw the omelet right on top of it. A little bit more. You could use just chives in the summer if you have chives in your garden. And I didn't put any pepper in here. The French don't put black pepper in things. They put it on it. They'll sometimes use white pepper, which I'm not a big fan of. Um, but yeah, you can add pepper at the end with a good pepper mill. A little bit of butter. So I can make as I demonstrated, I can make an omelet with a fork, but I have to admit, I am a little partial to using a spatula. Okay, so I can see how that's bubbling, that the temperature is just right and the, egg, the onions are cooked, so I'm going to add my eggs. And as I'm shaking this pan, I can see I kind of have egg on the side of the pan. So we'll look at it afterwards and see how that, if there's any sticking. But I don't think so. It'll be easy to clean. Just a bit of chain mail. Okay, so here's my hack. Um, and I learned this in a restaurant where we have a salamander, which is an overhead broiler. So you can take an omelet like this and just stick it up into the salamander and finish cooking it. But, so a salamander basically is a broiler. So I'm going to put some cheese on here. You can see the egg is still fairly runny. And at this stage, we would probably start to roll it if you want a real classic French omelet that's runny. But if you want it cooked a little bit more, you can put it under the broiler. Now, if you leave it for a while, it's actually going to souffle and pop up, puff up if you like your eggs more cooked. Our cheese is melted. The egg is cooked a little bit more than the previous ones. And I think we're pretty good on the bottom. Not too much color. This is where it kind of wants to fold over on itself. There we are. There we go. 
Okay, so that's the third omelet right there. And no color, a little bit, let's take a look inside. It's still a little bavus, but not too much. It, it's done just right. And I mean, that was really quick. That was like under two minutes. And then for me, if I'm in a hurry at home and the pan's not really dirty, and I mean, you can see there was a bit of egg stuck on the side, but you can actually just wipe it with a paper towel. Um, sometimes I don't even wash the pan to keep the finish nice. And if it's dirty, I wash it. If it's not dirty, sometimes I'll just wipe it out. And kind of polish it a little bit. And then if you see anything stuck on it, you can just take a little bit of chain mail to it. You can add a bit of the beeswax. And you're good. You don't need a non-stick pan. Okay, so that looks like a French omelet to me. Yeah. And that looks like a carbon steel pan to me. Uh-huh. And that cooked that. And so I think that kind of proved the point that it can be done. And sure, like process doing exactly like Jacques Pepin, right? <laughs> like go ahead and make it perfectly like he does every single time. That is a, a definitely a master who has mastered the craft of doing it in that artistic style. This, the way in which it's going to taste and the texture is going to be identical, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So thank you so much for putting that one to bed. I do appreciate that. Yeah. There is absolutely nothing in the kitchen that you need a nonstick pan for. Like, can it's you true. think of Eggs anything? Eggs are the only thing that I used and, and I have in my base. Actually, you have an exchange program, don't you? Yeah, we have, we do I have a, a year. couple yeah, of yeah. old uh, uh, nonstick pans well, in my basement well, that well, I definitely do. want to get rid of them. They always have a plastic handle and screws here and they, yeah, yeah, they yeah. come loose and you can't put them in the oven. I mean, the yeah. other thing I love about these is you can put them right in the oven. Yeah, absolutely. So in your professional experience that mm -hmm. is vast, mm -hmm. is there anything that you would think that you have to use a nonstick pan for? Well, no, if it's not eggs, nothing. Right, okay. Yeah, and go. I have actually carbon steel um, pans at home, omelet pans that I got at Le Dillerin in Paris. Yeah. And I thought like, what am I gonna buy here? Oh, not omelet pans, crepe pans. Crepe pans, yeah. Yeah, so I have two crepe pans and yeah. I pull those out if I wanna make crepes. Right, yeah. right. Okay, so there we go. So I hope that was informative and entertaining for you. Any questions or comments, please throw them below. Thanks so much. Thanks, Chad. Breakfast right. time. <laughs> <laughs>